Shalom, Shalom, Israel. It's your brother Yakal. And uh, I want to give all praise to Yahweh in the name in the name of his son Yahweh Shai. Now, the lesson I'm gonna go in today is uh <clears throat> the lesson I'm going in today is about uh is Christ talked about in the old testament. I, um, I got a, there's a lot of people that say Christ is not talked about in the Old Testament, uh, you know. But let's get what the Bible says, not our own opinion, not what we think or what we feel. But let's get what the Bible says. First, we're gonna get Second Corinthians chapter ten, verse five, verse four. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of a Mashiach. So we got to uh, go by what the scriptures say. So we can cast down all imaginations. Right. Let's go to Isaiah. Chapter 28. Verse 3. I think it's 3. Maybe lower than that. Salakia. Right here. Verse Isaiah 28 and 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. That's how we're going to understand if Christ was talked about in the Old Testament because we're going to get here a little and there a little. Right? First thing we're going to go to, first scripture that we're going to get. It's Hebrews. Uh, we're going to start from Hebrews. Uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 4. And it reads, For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering, thou wouldest not. But a body hast thou prepared me. And burnt offerings and sacrifice for sin that has no, ha, has no pleasure. Then said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O Yahweh. Above, above when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin that was not, neither had thou pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O Yahweh. He take away the first that he may establish the second. By which will he? By which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of a Mashiach Yahushai once for all? Right. Let's get Isaiah. Now we got that in the New Testament. Now let's see what the Old Testament says. Isaiah fifty-three, verse one. Who have believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he have grown. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of the ground, out of a dry ground. He have no form, no comeliness. When he, we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquitted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet will, yet we did esteem him stricken, smit, smite, smite, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions; he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we were we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord have laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before he, her shears is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He, will, he was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. When he made his grave with the wicked and with the and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. 
he had put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin he shall see see his seed he shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the lord shall prosper in his hand he shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by the by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many for shall for he shall bear their iniquities therefore will i divide him a portion with the great and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sins of the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Right? Now let's get Acts twenty-nine and thirty and thirty and Acts twenty-nine. Right? We read about how he was made an intercession for transgression and how he did these things, right? And how he was going to be smitten, and, and, and how he was going to be uh, rejected, but less. And he, and he was made uh, uh, intercession for our sins. Let's read that again, though. Isaiah fifty-three, and verse one. Let's get it. Okay. Verse Isaiah 53 and 8. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he has was for he was cut off uh, uh, cut out he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. Let's, let's go down to um verse eleven. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge, shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Verse uh, 12, therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for transgression. Let's see what that's talking about. All right? Acts chapter 5, verse 29. And it reads, Then Peter and the other apostles answered, and then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Amashiach, Yahawashai, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. He may have God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness sins. Because he was made to give repentance for Israel for forgiveness sins. So we forgive him forgiven because he didn't, he didn't, God is not, he's not dealing with sacrifice no more. With animals, with animal sacrifice. Right? You got to be the true, uh, the, 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 of your, of your mind. You got to change. Because there would be no more animals in, in the world if we had if we still had to sacrifice. The perfect sacrifice was a Mashiach Yahweh oh, Let's continue. John, uh, we can go to John chapter 5, verse 46. Because we want to get more accounts. We got to get precept upon precept. You know, John 5. John 5 and 46. Oh, dang it. So lucky. All right. John chapter 5, verse 46. For had ye... For had ye believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how should ye believe my words? So, Mashiach Yehoshua is saying this clearly, right? Now, let's go to Genesis chapter 49. Uh, Genesis chapter 49, verse 10. Right. Genesis 49 and verse 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be, binding his foal unto the vine, and his ass's coat unto the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine, and his clothes in the blood of grapes. Right? And we know that Hebrews 7 and, 4, uh, 7 and 14 says our Lord sprang out of Judah. It's evident, right? Now let's get Matthew 21 and 5. Matthew chapter 21, verse 5. Tell ye the daughter of Zion, behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, in a coat, the fowl of an ass. Now we read about that in, in Genesis 49. 
All the way in the Old Testament. The so-called Old Testament. Because it's all one. The Bible doesn't contradict itself, right? Now let's get Revelation chapter 1. We got to get more accounts. We need we need precept upon precept. We need proof. More witnesses. All right. Revelations. Chapter 1, verse 13. And it reads. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. This is this is the description of Jesus Christ. Yahweh Shai. Amashiach Yahweh Shai. Let's go up to one then. Revelation 1 and 1. The revelation of Amashiach Yahweh Shai, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which will shortly come to pass. Now let's go. The 13, verse 13, in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about, and girt about the paths with a girding girdle. His head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow. His, his head is white and woolly, right? His head is white and woolly, um, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Eyes is red, right? And his feet like an, around his eyes. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. So in the whiteness of his eyes, is they're going to be red, right? Now let's go to um, where it's found out in an old in the Old Testament. The same description. Daniel 10 and 5. Daniel chapter 10, verse 5. Then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen. Whose loins were girded with fine gold of Euphrates. We read about girded with the paps of golden girdle, right? We read that, right? We read that in the New Testament, but it's saying it's in the Old Test, the, the Daniel, Daniel, all right. Verse six: His body also was like the barrel, and the face of his uh, a face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire. We read about his eyes as red, right? And his arms and his feet like in color to polished brass. We read about it as, uh, like it was burnt in a furnace. Right? And the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. This is in the Old Testament. This is a Mashiach Yahweh Shai. We have to believe the word and what the word says. Right? And let's get Deuteronomy 18. Uh, verse 15. The Lord thy God. Right here. We're going to get this. Will raise up unto thee a prophet from a miss from the midst of thee of thy brethren, like unto thee, unto to him ye shall hearken. Okay. Now we now we gonna go uh to eighteen. And I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak it to them all that I shall command him, and it shall come to pass that whatsoever. That whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will cry it of, of him. Right? Now we go to get um, Acts 13 and 22. Because we got to get into the New Testament too. Precept upon precept. Acts 13 and 22. Acts chapter 13 verse 22. Uh, right here, let's start this one. Is it 22? Where is it? Go to uh, oh, name Salaki. It's Salaki, we just read about him raising up a prophet from among our brethren, right? Acts 13 and 22. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will of this man's seed. Have God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel, a savior, Hamashiach. When John had first preached before his coming, the baptism of repentance to all people of Israel. And as John fulfilled his course, he said, Whom think ye that I am? I am not he, but behold, there cometh one after me, whose shoes of his feet I am not worthy to loose. Right? Now let's get Romans 11 and 25. You got to get more. Romans chapter 11, verse 25. 
For I will not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel. And to the fullness of the Gentiles be come in, and so all Israel shall be saved. So we know the Gentiles are talking about Israel, but we on another subject. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, that shall come out of the out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Who is that? Um, deliver out of Zion with Deuteronomy 18 is talking about already a prophet among thy brethren. That's what that's talking about. That's what that's talking about. Right? Now let's get some more. Let's get Zechariah. Let's get Zechariah. Where is it at? Zechariah uh, chapter 13, verse 7. Zechariah chapter 13 verse 7 says, Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, and against the man that is my fellow, except the Lord of hosts, except the Yahweh Most High Power. Smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered, and I will turn my hand upon the little ones. All right. Now let's see who that shepherd is. All right. Let's see who that shepherd is. You gotta get, I think it's Mark. Let's get Mark 9. 31. Mark chapter 9, verse 31. What is it? It's a lucky. It's a lucky. We, gonna, uh, we, we, we want that, but we want we want another one. Uh John 10 and 14. I believe it's John 10 and 14. John chapter 10, verse 14. And it reads. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. As the father know of me, even so know I the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. Right? What did it say? What did it say in Zechariah 13 and 7? What is that? What is that? What is that talking about? Zechariah 13 and 7. Let's read it. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd and against the man that is my fellow. Said the Lord of hosts, smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered. That's going back into John. Let's get John again. John chapter 10, verse 14. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. As the father know of me, even so know I the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. He died for our sins, for repentance. Come on, man. Psalms. Now let's get let, let, let's read Zechariah again. Zechariah 13 and 7. Let's read it again. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd. Awake, O sword. Right? Against my shepherd and against the man that is my fellow. So let's see what the sword is. Let's see what the sword is. Psalms. 17 and 13. Arise, O Yahweh, disappoint him, cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword, from men which are thy hand, O Yahweh, from men of the world, which have their portion in this life, and whose belly thou fillest with thy hid treasures. They are full of children, and leave the rest of their substance unto their babes. Who is this talking about? Who is this talking about right here? Let's get uh, Mark 9 and 31. That's, what, that's the one I want to get. Mark chapter 9, verse 31. And it reads, For he taught his disciples and said unto them, The Son of Man is delivered unto the hands of men, and they shall kill him. And after that he is killed, he shall rise in the third day. All right. Now, who who shall kill him? Man of the world. They have their portion in this life. Who's the man of the world? The Romans. They killed him. They mocked him. All right. Now let's get some more. Let's get some more. Um, uh, let's get 
let's get Daniel. We're gonna get some more. These are more accounts of the Son of Man. Let's get more accounts on the Son of Man. All right. Let's get this. Daniel seven and nine. I beheld to the thrones were cast down, and the ancient of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool, his throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. Right? Now let's go Daniel 7 and 13. Let's see what this is saying. I saw in the night visions and beheld one like the Son of Man. It's talking about the Son of Man. Who is the Son of Man? Hamashiach Yahawasha. But I thought he wasn't in the Old Testament. One like the Son of Man with the um came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days, and they brought him nearer before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away in his in his kingdom that which should not be destroyed. Right? Right? Let's get Revelations 1 and 6. Let's get that account in the New Testament. Revelations 1 and verse 6. Through 7. And have made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. What is it talking about that glory and dominion? The Son of Man, who, who which God gave him the is going to give him the which gave him the Salakia, which gave him the uh, dominion. Let's read Daniel again. Let's read Daniel again. We got to go precept upon precept to get the true understanding and to and, and to cast all these these, these, these imaginations, right? Let's, let's start from uh, Daniel seven and thirteen. I saw the night visions, and behold, one like the son of a man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days, and they brought him near before him, and there was given him dominion and glory and a in a kingdom that all people, nation, and language should serve him, right? Now let's get that in Revelations 1 and 6. Re Revelations the 1 verse 6. And have made us kings and priests unto God and his father. To him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him. And they also shall pierce him and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so. Amen. See, they're talking about what? Be glory and dominion forever. Because God gave him uh, the meaning. Right? Everything is done by the Most High. He's 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 putting the, the, the meaning for his son to go and wreak vengeance on his place. Where is that at? Let me get that. Isaiah 66. Uh... 66 and I think 17. Isaiah 66 and 15. For the Lord will come with his with fire and with his chariot like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and the rebuke of flames of fire. For by fire and with his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many. The slain of the Lord shall be many. Now let's get some of that. It, it, it. All right, let, let's get more on it. Revelation 19 and 14. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth go with a sharp sword, that with it he shall smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, because he's going to get dominion over all language, nations, and tongues, right? Rule them with a rod of iron. They're going to be slaves. They're going to bow down and he shall and he treadeth the winepress of fearness and wrath of almighty God. So he's going to have the, 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 the anger of, of the most high Yahweh on him. The most High going to put his anger on him and he's going to put it on us too. All right. And he have on his vesture and his uh, on his high a name written king of kings, Lord of lords. Now let's get this. Let's get this. Let's get Isaiah again. Isaiah. All right, let's get Isaiah 53, verse 3 again. Isaiah 53, verse 3. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. 
Surely he hath borne our griefs, right? And carried out and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed, right? Now let's get first Peter. First Peter chapter two. Verse 21. First Peter chapter 2, verse 21. All right, let's get it. For even here too we were ye called, because Amashiach also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his, follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. He committed himself to Yahweh, who his own self bare our sins in his own body on the tree that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness. By whoso stripes ye were healed. So we dead to this wicked world, man. We're not taking part of this, none of this wicked pleasures of this world. We followed after Mashiach Yahushua. He kept the laws and commandments. Right? Now get Jeremiah 3, verse 8. Jeremiah. Uh, Salakia. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 8. And it reads. Salaki. We're not even, we're not even gonna get that. Uh, now let's get second Ezra, right? Let's see if he's in second Ezra. Let's let's see if the account of Mashiach Yahweh is in second Ezra. It's a prophecy that's gonna happen. These words are true. You know, Isaiah, second Ezra chapter 2, verse 45. He answered and said unto me, These be they that have put off the mortal clothing, so I have put off this wicked world, right? And uh, and put on the immortal, and have confessed the name of God. Now are they crowned and received palms. Then said I unto the angel, What young person is it that crowneth them and giveth? them palms in their hands so he answered and said unto me it is the son of God whom they have confessed in the world you have to confess a Mashiach Yahweh Shai. The then began I greatly to commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of Yahweh now let's get Matthew 10 Matthew 10 and 32 verse 33 Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta um, uh, confess the most uh, Amashiach Yahweh before everybody. He shall save. Second John, by the power of Yahweh, you know. Second John. Chapter 1, verse 7. John chapter 1, verse 7. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not Jesus Christ is, is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Right? Now let's get Romans 3 and 4. Romans chapter 3, verse 4. And it reads, For what if some did not believe Verse 3. Romans chapter 3, verse 3. For what if some did not believe? Shall then unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God be God forbid, yet let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Now let's get Revelation 21 and 8. And it reads. But the fearful and unbelieving, that's what's going to happen to the um, the people that, that if they don't believe. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and the whoremongers and the sorcerers and the idolaters and all liars who lie on the, on Mashiach Yahweh's side saying he's not coming to flesh and, and you're not keeping the commandments. You, 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 you act like you, okay, you cannot be forgiven. Uh, cause God doesn't, if you, if you, come on, what are you doing? Are you sacrificing? Are, are you going to the altar in Jerusalem? Are you, are you? Cutting lambs and, and are you doing it? Do we still have a high priest? No, we're in a land of our captivities. 
Amashiach um, Yahweh was the perfect sacrifice for us to come back and, and, and repent. And, and God giving us grace and, and it's time to repent and come out of this wicked world. Okay, Revelation 21 and 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and the whoremongers and sorcerers and dollars and, li and all liars shall all have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Shalom.